makes a good two-player game? Competitive or cooperative? Well, there's not a better time to discuss this when Valentine's Day around the corner. Coming up. Hi everyone, hope you're well. It's Stella and Tarrant from Maple University. Welcome back to our Tabletop Diary, in time for Valentine's Day. If you ever wonder what are the things that makes good two-player games, we want to discuss this and share with you what we think of it. So it is a bit more like discussion between me and Tarrant. So if you have anything to say, please write in the comment sections below, so we'll check it out later. So we do often play two-player games naturally, mm. and we do have some thoughts about what we feel are the games that work quite well playing with two players. And that's regardless of whether it's a designed two-player game or not. And I think there's a lot to be learned from designed two-player games and how they compare with bigger games that scale down or how well they scale down. What do you think? <coughs> um, we also will going to mention a few of our favourite two-player games. Um, the one that keeps coming back to the table, it's, um, yeah, so that's coming. So would you like to share what you think of what actually that is a good to play a game? I think the biggest thing for me is we play a lot of four player games, four and five player, that's sort of our, the, that's the best count for a lot of the games we play, a lot yep. of the heavier Euro types of things. Most actually it's four players I notice. Yep. Yep. And we're general, we're kind of care bears when we play, really. We don't like the big area control sort of things all that much compared with resource building. And we're not that take batty or vindictive about things. And one of the... <coughs> well, there are some exceptions, but carry on. And I think one of the big things in a three or four player game is that... I don't like singling out someone to attack or singling out someone to block just for the sake of it. Um, and that's a key part of tactical gaming is blocking people out from things. When you're playing with higher player counts... <coughs> it's, let me, ten, it's ten to do... It kind of like... I know what you mean though. It's like... It's about a bit like king making as well, especially if somebody is ahead and you attack that person or you attack the person that is, um, I don't know, that you think that always wins in the game or, mm. or is it based on the strategy or is it based on that particular game or you don't want to attack your partner because you're scared that you're going to get kicked out and sleep on the sofa. Mm. Anyway, sorry, carry on. Yeah, so king, <coughs> king making or the need to for the collective team to block each other equally is something that it's something I don't enjoy and I like when I like in a two player game you strip all of the complexity of that away and a That's lot true. of the games that I I find scale best to two players or that I like best as two players bring you down to a point where it's just as valuable to block somebody else as it is to forward your own game and that forms a critical part of the strategy so for me that's what I like in a two-player game particularly one that scales down is one where I've got a very clear way of responding to what my opponent is doing I agree in that part because there's like we, we tried many different games many two-player games like specifically two players and games that are, you know, can play multiple players, but we play two players. Some work, some don't. And that's one thing about it. Um, for example, I think, um, I don't know, I, I played Bunny Kingdom just right there next to you. That's why I, I thought about it. And Terraforming Mars. And it's interesting to have a scaled down mechanics for two players. So some games do that too, by the way. So they have special rules for card drafting for two players, both actually card drafting mm. and it sometimes make the game feels different and plays differently. Yep. Yep, I think so. And I think 
on the converse side, the thing that works badly for me when a two-player game scales down is if it takes something that, even if it wasn't directly at, not attacking. so much attacking, even if it wasn't directly impacting other players, if it t doesn't scale down like the action space is available and makes things too plentiful, you can turn a game that is at least a competitive action draft into something that is very much more solitary. And I remember most distinctly uh, Lords of Waterdeep. Yep. When we played that at two players, we were pretty much doing our own thing. It didn't have anywhere near the feeling. It's that too. Everything is widely did. available. Yeah. And you know, I don't remember. Is there scaling mechanics for two players? There, there I is think? some scaling. I think it changes the number of workers you have, but I don't think it. Uh, Enough. I don't think it changes the action spaces very much. And so, yeah, things felt relatively plentiful. I see what you mean. So, that's one sample of, you know, obviously things don't scale down very well for yeah. two players. So, like, some of the examples, I'm thinking of a few examples before this, there's a very distinct difference in the two-player game for the basic Azul and Azul's Summer Pavilion. And I... You know, we were playing the basic Azul two-player uh, the other day, and I really enjoy that as a two-player game because it has a lot more interplay. With only five factory tiles, things are really tight. You can see what your opponent's doing. You can see, right, there's only six red tiles on the board, and I need five of them. Am I going to get that, yes or no? And then you can go to a different strategy. So Less chaotic, you meant, in a way. Controlled. Yeah, it's Controlled all... chaos. Yeah, it's a little bit more. I guess there's a little more. It, it's a little more restricted because with nine tiles in a four-player game, you can usually get the tiles. At oh, least right, some of yes. them. With the two-player game, it is a lot tighter, and you can play off your opponent. But when we were playing Summer Pavilion, uh, that had, I f we found you saw it as well that there's sort of across six rounds, there's only really enough tiles to complete three and a bit stars, and so I was doing three of the stars, you were doing the other three stars, and we weren't competing that much for colour. So I felt that that one, because of that ability for us to run our own path, didn't really scale down anywhere near as well as bases all. Although, I, I think this is, this is a bit of a spoiler, <clears throat> I do like Summer Pavilion because of a few things. We, I am... I do have a video for it, so I'll check it out, why? Um, but I see what you mean. It's just certain things that it's very restrictive. But then again, it's restrictive for you and restrictive for me. So we're both getting restricted. It's In a way, it's kind of balanced in a way. I mean, I know what you mean, but in yeah. other way, it's a balance, more balanced to play games as well. It's, defi it's definitely <laughs> balanced. Um, I just found it more solitary. Yep, I understand. I remember this particular game that we don't actually agree, Parade. It's actually yep. one of our early how to play videos. Yep. If you notice, it's, um, it's very, um, the reason, I, I think the reason, correct me if I'm wrong, the reason you like it is because... As a two player. Yeah, as a two player, is because it's more controlled, you know what's going to happen more, it's not... Like what I said before, it's not too chaotic, is that correct? Yeah, I find um, with Parade at higher player counts, so much has changed before your next turn that really every turn is just these are my four cards, what's my minimum damage? Where oh, was it five cards? I <clears throat> but in two player, because you can... There's only going to be one other card played before your turn, so you can at least plan ahead a little bit. And um, you can be a little more tactical there. So I found, yeah, that was one that scaled down quite well. Even though it's a nice filler for six players, which there aren't that many of. Which, that's probably the reason why I would say that it's better for more player accounts for me, personally. It's because I actually, you... <clears throat> okay, Taran is really good at planning ahead with gaming. And I find that he's already planning like five, six steps ahead while well, only plan two steps ahead so this works for me i can just like plan a little bit things at a time which one got me the least amount of damage and then plan ahead like only just 
twice, oh, mm. two steps. So that's probably why I was like, aha, mm. that, that ruins your plan. Ha 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 ha. That's mm. basically why. Yeah. <clears throat> I think um, one of the games that we've only played Terraforming Mars at two players once. We've played it at four or five players heaps of times. Um, <clears throat> I always remember how different that was at two players. We played it with drafting every round. So, of course, there was a lot of drafting to keep cards away from each other in that. <laughs> yeah, I like that bit about it. Yep. And it comes to one mechanism that it sometimes works well or sometimes doesn't. And that's a majority mechanism. When you've got, like, the majority mechanism where whoever's got the most in something at the end of the game gets 10 points and whoever's next gets 6. That sort of thing, it's mostly, I think, built for the higher player counts. And when you get that in a two-player game, it can it changes its importance and it changes the way you play it dramatically. Because, you know, the milestones in Terraforming Mars, I assume it's visible in the frame, I'm pointing at it. Yep, I think the so. The milestones in Terraforming Mars... It's not just a five-point bonus in a two-player game. It's a ten-point swing for whether you get it or your opponent That's gets correct. it. And when we played, I, I was beaten quite heavily, but there came a generation during the game where I looked at all of the milestones and realised that there was already two of them that I could not possibly win in. And I think there was one that I was probably going to lose, but I might have been able to swing it. And so I spent that entire generation... Master, not master, award, 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 just funded Try them all to, yeah. to get them away from you. And I think you still got two out of three of them. You beat me pretty heavily in that game. But that was, I found, mm. let's say it's not always going to work well, but I found that really interesting and a very important part of two-player terraforming Mars, which was quite, quite fun to discover and play. Yeah, that's, that's quite a surprise when we found that out. Well, we don't... No, usually not until we actually play it. I remember I, I think I, I'm probably quite lucky when I get the cards and we, we play fully drafting, of yep. course, um, into players. So I'm quite lucky and I've already started to specialize at the start of keep getting the cards and you actually don't, was it the Venus one, I think? And I keep getting I that remember. and you are not collecting that. So I keep getting the things that you don't collect and you concentrate on something else, a few other things. Yep. I think that's why I got yeah, lucky. Yeah, I think, and I think, I I distinctly remember making a horrible error and just giving you the card you needed to fulfill a milestone. It was really silly. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing that you can just directly think ahead when playing to play game mm -hmm. in their forming Mars. And I think, you know, if we bring this back to a designed two-player game, and you think of some of the good designed two-player games out there, and whether they'd work at high accounts. Like, you have Seven Wonders Duel, because you got all the duel games, right? So Seven Wonders Duel, um, it breaks it right down to that card draft, card selection with the, the grid mechanism. And kind of like Parade, I think you need to be able to count ahead and see ahead to what only one person's doing for that sort of mechanism yes. to work. That one's all right. You can see quite clearly and you kind of... Well, there's some elements of luck when you flip the cards. You don't know what it is. Yep. But um, I like that bit, yeah. Yep. And Channel Tunnel. Uh, wasn't 1987 Channel Tunnel? Oh, the yeah. one we played recently. It's actually made for two players. Yep. And, I mean, thematically that makes sense because it's a two-country tunnel. I was thinking, could you expand that game to three players by making, I guess, re-theming it? Because <laughs> it work, but... Well, it's not based on true stories anymore. Yeah. So could you could you use that mechanic, um, which is using the little stacks of discs and taking them back? And even that is a draft mechanic that I think works a lot better with two players than three because there's a lot of like um, predicting on what that one opponent is going to be doing or not giving them the easy uh, out to get the tiles they want because you've got different options on different cards. And this is, I think you destroy me in this one. When we play, I don't think I just. I think I got what the you won. the combo one. Yes, but, yeah. yeah, yes, yes, and this is where you plan ahead, so many steps ahead, and I can't, and or I don't, or choose not to. I can't remember, <laughs> and you won. So that's this is what makes the two play games better. Um, I like that part as well to a certain degree. If you know, as long as it's not like ten steps ahead, I guess it's okay. 
I know that there's another favorite of mine. Oh, actually, before that, we talk about the game that scales down good, Bruxelles. Yep, Bruxelles 1897, the Correct. card game version. Mm -hmm. The two players version is really good. Yeah, that was. I remember being distinctly surprised when I played that because I thought when I was reading the rules, um, there were a couple of obvious pathways you could go to get points, and I thought it was going to be one of those games where you scaled it down, one person went this way, one person went that way, yes. they'd specialize, and whoever specialized best in their thing would win. Um, but as we, no. yeah, as we played through it, um, because it the didn't specialization, pan out that no, the specialization all. changes because each round the bonus styles mm -hmm. got drawn randomly and then placed in different, um, yep. uh, in the different, different columns. columns yeah. Yep. And then what you want in the column, not necessarily matching the one that you want in the bonus. Yeah. Yeah. I think that because that's, that's got a double, a double impact drafting, uh, system essentially, I think that's what makes that work really well as two players because you're choosing the action but you're also choosing what column you're in and that placement dictates a majority later and so you can take a lesser action to block your opponent from getting the majority that's worth a lot of points and that was why it didn't end up just being I'll do buildings you'll do post office sort of it wasn't post office uh, art yeah I'll do buildings you do art it ended up being very tight and that very worked nice. nicely. I can't really um, let you get away with the buildings as well. Yeah. And that's another piece. And that's also in Channel Tunnel. I can't get away, let you get away with drilling the tunnels because mm. the more rubble I have, the more points you have. Yeah. So that's also a good mechanics. Yeah. Sp speaking about those games, so far we've been talking about the competitive games. We do play cooperative games, by the way. And um, we've got many favorites. One that keeps coming back to the table is Codenames Duet. Codenames Duet, yep. I, it's probably, it might be my favorite design two-player game, if not two-player game. I think it's just, it takes what worked well about Codenames, Codenames. and makes it so tight. And I don't think it's just because... That tired that we don't often win. Oh, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're terrible at it. And I don't think that's... I don't know if it's because it's been designed in a specific two-player way. I just think it's just a really nice design. There's nothing uniquely two-player about what makes it good. It's just, it's just a really good game. Yeah. And another one that we play a lot is the escape room games. So yeah. in a lot of cooperative games, there are some... I won't say issues, some dilemma where there are too many, too many heads. What do you say? Too many chips? Yeah, too many, too many brains Ballots. at the table, basically. And I think whether it's a puzzle style game like Pandemic or, sorry, a puzzle style pieces game like yeah. Pandemic or a puzzles in a book like an escape room, um, you've got to play that with the right size team, I think. And... Generally, when it comes to any of those sorts of things, we just enjoy doing it as a two-player rather than... With other people. It's quite easy. It yeah, it was like, that night, what are we going to play? And just get one of the... What, what's our favourite? We played Exit, Unlock, yeah. Deckscape. Um, w one that we started enjoy playing is Adventure Games. The Dungeon and Monochrome, I think, the other one. Mm -hmm. So we like those sort of games where it's really easy, just two players and there's not too many heads. So we, we often go to escape room, like exactly actual escape room, just the two of us. Well, the brand is yeah. mainly Taran, mind you. Yeah, we both contribute. And I think the, um, I think the worst times I've had in escape rooms was when there were too many people. Yeah, really? Yeah, like the actual just, escape room game? Like yeah, you just... The physical game? More, I don't, I would never do one with more than four again. Oh, really? How many players we've done? Like four and five is probably okay. It just ends up being... There's not enough different puzzles and when there's too many people, it's hard to... It's the, hard for everyone to get anything out of it. 
back again when I say too many heads, too many brains. Yeah. It's probably it's one of those things. Yeah, I think one thing that I like it. I like it when a game recognizes that even though it could technically mechanically scale down to two players, um, when they realize that they don't do it very well and they just leave that off the player count. The oh box. right. I think um, yeah, a recent example is Flotilla. It's a three to five player game. I don't. I don't believe there's any mechanics reason why you couldn't play that with two players, but because it's got the sink side sky sky mechanism, side, yeah. and you need to, you know, what one side yes. is doing affects the other. Yes. That asymmetry is critical to the game, and so they just drop two players off. The You're right. Box. I always wonder. I haven't thought about that um, further. Why does it has to be minimum of three players in flotilla? Mm. Is because of that balance that needs to be you know yeah. uh, you know strike for the sink side and the sky, sky side. side thank you yeah. so um those are the things that what other games that we haven't mentioned that we like playing i think even compass um which is yeah. the, a new game worked pretty well yeah pretty well for two players um anything else uh, all on all on's invasion it's a cooperative game yeah I don't know if it's a... You know, you can play two to three players, I think. We've often played that three. I think we've played that two as well. It was very tight with two, actually. If I remember correctly, that one... Um, it was so... It became a lot harder with fewer players. I think you get that Aus sometimes Aus in... Australia. Australia as well. It was a lot harder with two players. And you can find that sometimes in a co-op when it scales down. Um... Mm -hmm suddenly you don't have enough actions to do everything. In fact, we even found that it's a very different game, Pandemic, with two pawns versus four. And when we did Legacy, we were two people playing four pawns because it just felt a little more comfortable being able to uh, spread across the world more quickly. And the cards as well. Like, how many cards you can have in your hands? If, you, with four players, you have a lot more options with a cards that you collect in your hands. Yeah, you hold more cards. I think you start with fewer. There's a couple of offsets for it, but it becomes quite a different game, yeah. That's true. Anything else you can think of? Um, the games that we play? I'm sure there yeah. are other ones. Oh, um, Rush MD. Uh, that's a cooperative play. Yeah. It's it's already co uh, it's already chaotic in two players. I was like looking at the games. It's already quite chaotic in two players. I think, I don't know if it's... I mean, we all, we play it for two players and we really enjoy that. Yeah. What do you think of that? Um, because, I like, think... arms going everywhere on the table. Because it's a real-time cooperative game. Yeah, that's one of those, like Kitchen Rush, it's from the same series. I think that is a... Kitchen Rush is a little bit different though, although it's similar, I think. I think it's a game... I reckon that's a game that... Assuming the objectives scale correctly, it probably the gameplay probably is pretty similar at different player counts. I reckon um, less bumping into each other with two players though. Yes, that's right. Uh, another, I think another game that I really prefer at the two player count versus higher is Dominion. It's a simple thing, but I find treating it as a duel and responding more directly to. My, I think it's two things. Firstly, it's responding directly to my single opponent's cards. If I know they're getting a lot of attacks, I'll go and get a lot of moats or whatever the defensive one is. If they look like they're going a fast game, I've got to adjust my pace to that. I find that a lot cleaner at two players than four players. And the fact that the game almost always ends from the provinces being empty rather than the um, the decks being out, I think that two also players, usually. at two player, yeah, it turns it into a race, and <laughs> I just find that works well. For two players yeah. counts. Out of all the dominions that you have, well, this this attacking one, was, oh hey, I play this, you get a curse card, and mm. all of um, there's a, a other type as well that affects others. I think I can't remember. I haven't played all of the minions played most of them i play more than you i think in dominion yeah. there's an event card and things like that that yeah. probably might change it a little bit but you're talking about the basic of dominion just just any of the 
Or the ones I've played, certainly. I've enjoyed it at two players. And that's how we usually play it. So, those other games. I'm sure I have other games that I have not mentioned and I forgot to mention. I still really want to try Food Chain Magnate at two players. I think that will be a very... I think, again, the, the ability to make it just sort of direct chess, direct, like, not just picking off the weaker guy and going there. It's like, okay, I can see my sole enemy's restaurant. I have to work out exactly how to ruin that restaurant. I think it would be a more comfortable hmm. cutthroat game at two players, and I would like to try that at some time. So, if you want to get bitten again, at Twitch and Magnate, That's true. I've never... me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that is true. I've never been here. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about it. that You're quite I'm... good at it. I'm just thinking, what did I do? Maybe because of the fact that it's more than two players, I get other people to steal your thing, maybe, and then I just like get advantage out of it. Well, maybe we'll find out. <laughs> maybe we'll play it with the expansions as well. That's true. So I think that's it. Yep, I think that'll do. Yeah, well, if you have anything that you would like to add, uh, please write in the comment sections below or have a look and I'll try to reply as soon as I could. And if you can, please subscribe to us. Click the meeple in the corner if you like and hit the bell so you won't miss anything from us. And you can also follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of photos, reviews and everything on Instagram. And that's it. So hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Bye.